Welcome back to Infanity FC. I am David Copeland-Smith, and this is not Lauren Sesselman. My name is Jackie Gutierrez, and I'm with Dave today. So today, Lauren is off being super famous. So Jackie has stood in for her. Jackie runs a fantastic women's football company called Women Kick Balls. You should definitely check those out. Angel City are on a two-game winning streak. Two difficult games, one against Chicago and the other against North Carolina Courage. So, Jackie, what do you think? Two-game winning streak. We're going against arguably the best team in the league today. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think today's going to be a good lineup. Obviously, you look at some of these NWSL standings, and it's still early in the season. But, I mean, Kansas City Current has been crushing it under Vlaco. Some of their goal scores are just so insane on the pitch, especially these internationals. And if Tell you, me about them. So we have Biaz Honorado, who's done really well, four goals so far. And you have Temwa as well, who also has four goals. So if you look at just the way that they are playing tactically, I mean, their speed on the ball, and just they are ruthless in some of these games where they're scoring, you know, five goals or whatever it is. So to have that many goals, I think it'll just be wild to see how Angel City can hold up against them. So, yeah, who knows? It's going to be pretty crazy, I think. Okay. So, you know, we're obviously begging up Kansas and their goal scoring prowess. I'm really excited to see Sarah Gordon go against Shawenga tonight. Um, I'd, I'd actually love to see them in a foot race because Shawenga might be the only person to, to match Sarah. Um, and also, let's see what Claire Elmsley does today. Say, Coming yeah. off an absolutely stellar performance against uh, North Carolina. I always get North Carolina and KC mixed up because it's KC and NC. You know, again, I, I look at I look at KC. They might bring Dabinia on. They might bring Michelle Cooper on. They've just got a plethora of, it's almost an embarrassing riches of attacking talent, right? Um, but I said this last game and we saw it for a little bit, which was Kennedy Fuller and Rocky Rodriguez, two very, very technical players. Two players who love going forward, and I hope we see that on the starting lineup tonight. Maybe if we get in early, I do this every week. Jackie, what's your predictions? Ooh, game predictions. Okay, this can be a little tough, but I'm gonna say Kansas City current four, Angel City two. Wow, that is, you just wowed me. Let's go. Let's go, Angel City. A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Good. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Okay, Jackie, so final score, three Kansas City, one Angel City. So your prediction wasn't that far off, but I will say first half, thought that was the best we've played all season. That 3-4-3, three, three, I thought it really worked well, that we created more than we've created all season. I thought, I'm biased, right, because I've got this Kennedy and Rocky thing in my head. <laughs> But I thought those two were phenomenal together. Um, we still need a little bit more up front, as in right. wide open chances. You know, finishing I, them. Yeah, I, I look back and I think, was there was there was there one or two that you thought you have to score that? Because mm -hmm. in my head, no. Right. Not, honestly, I'm a pretty harsh person, mm -hmm. and there wasn't one chance there where I think you sh you have to score that. Yeah. Right now, I thought Alyssa was like wiry in the first half. Um, could have done better with the shot where she cut in. Mm -hmm. But Claire 
stepped up and scored another goal. Let's talk about Claire Elms. She's on a roll. She's on a roll. I mean, it's crazy the fact that she set the tone and the pace that high. And it took a bit for Kansas City to catch up, really. So I think that was a good start for them. But then at the half, you have that then one VDB. to one. Then VDB. The next Bernardo come in. <laughs> they, they got and VDB, just thought, yeah. you know what? I'm going to go bang this from 25 yards. It was a clean Un shot. Unsavable. It was yeah. lovely. And the thing is, with Vanessa, Vanessa's had that in her locker years. She's right. such a nice technical player. Mm -hmm. Can't really blame anyone for that one. But 89th minute, it's 1-1. One, one. Now, Chewinga, I thought, you know, apart from a glimpse here and there, I thought we've, 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 done, we've done well to, I would say, contain. I wouldn't say shut down, but right. contain. Yeah, contain is good word. Um, she got away a few times, but Sarah uh, and, and, Madison and Madison both had well, great. I was going to say that he jumped yeah, on me. Sorry. God, where's <laughs> Lauren? <laughs> right. Thank you. Hey guys, um, look at your thoughts. One on the game that you played, but then on just how it plays out at the end and the disappointment with that. Yeah, I think. Um, it started off a little bit transitional, but I think once we got some momentum, um, we showed how dangerous we can be. I thought our back three, the the plan kind of was, was working. I thought we were able to really nullify their threats who have been very, very successful this season. So um, yeah, it was, we were really proud of the work the girls were putting in and putting in huge tackles. Maddie Curry, I think had an incredible night. Um, and I think, it just shows you have to be on your game for the entire 96 minutes. Um, we let down at the end. You know, it's it's tough coming in um, as a sub and, and feeling the momentum shift, and that's something that all of us will have to look at. But um, I don't think you can fault the effort that was put in against a really top team. It's just a shame that we couldn't we couldn't keep that going through the end through the end and come out with three or at least one point. Oh, we can hear you. Yeah, Alyssa, can you walk us through the uh, the goal that Claire um, scored? So at that point, you guys had some pretty good, strong um, uh, possession spells there for that. How do you see that sort of breakdown? Yeah, I thought our goal was really good. We had like a lot of possession at the time, and we were winning the ball back after we lost it too. I think. Our shape behind the ball was really good, and we were able to get in positions like that we practice. And um, there was just a lot of interchange, and I went wide, and I saw Claire, and she's always in good positions. So I passed her the ball, and she scored. Yeah, hi, Ali. Uh, you spoke about the back three. Obviously, you came in as a sub, but kind of you know, throughout the week or for however long, kind of what was it like adjusting to the new system? You know, when did that come up? <laughs> um, it was a really quick turnaround from the last game, obviously, and the players who played the last game had to recover and, and get ready for this game. So I think we really only had a day and a bit, um, and that's why I think even more credit to how well I think that change worked. I think that, um, you know, Chowinga and Michelle Cooper coming in, Mace, like, they had another gear, I think, and were able to wear us down a little bit. But I think that Meg and and Sarah and Maddie just were so strong back there. And again, we had really good spells of possession. And that was, I think, the key. And when we lost that a little bit and then we couldn't get pressure on the ball, yeah, they just kept coming and coming. But I do think that we have really good chances. It would be helpful for those three in the in the back line probably to finish finish a couple more chances and they were they were knocking on the door um french had a couple really really good saves but yeah i think we should have come out with like i said at least at least the tie yeah and then i'm curious about the captain's armband it looks like something's written on there on the, you know, oh one here or uh, the other yeah that was Whose idea was that kind of? Um, um, yeah, well, it says big anti-racist energy, which uh, we are proud to have here. Um, I think we have we have a few different armbands, but we, as a club and as a team, we really want to take all opportunities we can to show what we stand for. So yeah, this is this is obviously one of our favorites that that we've had from last season, and 
we have our, our uh, pride armband as well. So I think, yeah, any, again, there's, there are restrictions to, to what we can wear when we, um, when we go out onto the field, but obviously I had that opportunity um, at the World Cup to find a creative way to show. And I think what the club has done and, and huge credit to Brock, our, our equipment manager, to show, to be able to find a way for us to show what we stand for at this club. Jackie in the back. Hi, Ali. Hi, Alyssa. Um, two questions, just whoever wants to go for it. But what were just some of the pieces in the second half when you look at the overall game and just internally that you thought were working well at least? Um, I thought what was working well was like we were kind of trying to do the same thing in the first half. Um, definitely the changes that they made made it harder for us to get in positions that we wanted to. But I think <clears throat> like if we kept possession for a little bit longer, we could have been in the same spots that we were in the first half. Um, I think it just got challenging as it went on because we were running a lot. And then, Allie, for you, you mentioned um, how Kansas City came in with this extra kind of like gear in a sense um, with some of their subs. But how do you think the team looking forward now kind of embraces that and levels up for this next road game? I think we will analyze the game, of course, as usual. And we just, yeah, I think being gritty and being really hard working is something that we pride ourselves on. So now this really showed if we don't do that to the final whistle, that this league is too good, these teams are too good, the players are too good to just let them in an inch. So that's where we, again, the players who started the game, creating great chances, scoring a really, really good goal, that's something, can we keep doing that? Can we keep creating chances? Can we score another goal? And then as defenders, as wingbacks, can we show to the very end that we're willing to put our body on the line, sprint back, recover, and even higher up the field, put pressure on the ball so they don't even get to our defensive third to begin with. So I think putting the, all of those pieces together is something that we're going to have to do against every single team. And then now, off the back of this loss, it starts with Utah. All right, good everybody. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. on what you were happy with when you guys were ascendant and in the second half as they start to take over what was it that you guys were didn't do well or were unable to do um i think first half we created a decent amount of opportunities i think the game plan um i think structurally i think we won tackles um I think we came in at halftime in a good position. Um, something we talked about is when we do get the lead, we have to continue to play. Uh, I think arguably for 89 minutes, I think we did. I think we switched off for the last six minutes and you can't switch off in the last six minutes against any team in the, in the NWSL, let alone a team that scored 20 goals. So um, I think that is reflective of something we need to look at every day. Um, and we just have to get better from it. Uh, you know, thanks for taking the time as always. But could you just talk about you know moving into the three four three on you know maybe three days of preparation, um, and then how you saw that play out um, to limit uh, some of some of Kansas City's scars? Yeah, I think we stopped Kansas in transition for like for the most part of it. I think we were able to keep Beer and Chowinga pretty quiet. They've been two really threatening players, obviously in the league, and we chose to play in a three four three, build in a three with two sixes to have five players available for transition. I think when I looked at other teams play against them, often 1-6 gets punished. That happened to us last time. Um, when you build out with two centre-backs really wide, again, if you give the ball away, they're just looking to punish you. So something a little different. We didn't have a crazy amount of time to prepare, but um, I mean, credit to the team. In the time that we did have, they executed it really, really well. Um, 
And I think that, again, we did limit those chances. I think when you look at Kansas's depth of their squad, um, ultimately, I think that is something that you, you can bring Dominion off the bench. You're in a good space. Um, so, yeah, I think disappointed, again, for the last six minutes, really. Um, Di Bernardo hits one top corner, but the last two goals, I think, for us, we have to be better defensively. Um, it actually starts with us being better in possession and things that we spoke about before the game because you will get punished by these teams. Um, so... Yeah, I think, again, we had three days to turn around, um, really call it two, uh, but the team was really bought in and they executed the game plan really well, so that was pleasing for us as well. Yeah, and then Claire Emsley gets another goal. Could you just talk about her start to the season? You know, obviously tied up there for Golden Boot, right? You saw that. Yeah, um, I think Claire's found this like confidence and this flair in the box. I think it's really cool to see her, it's like, it's not even your scrappy goals now she's scoring. It's like composure, it's, she knows what she's doing. Um, and I think you need a player like that. Like you need that player that's gonna step up and you know that every game they're gonna create you or score goals for you. And I think Claire's taken that role on. I think she's kind of found her footing in the NWSL now. I think any player that comes over from Europe always finds it difficult. Um, and I think it takes some time to adapt. And I think Claire's really adapt, um, adapted really well. So yeah, it's great, I think. Again, Alyssa getting an assist is huge. Um, and we just have to keep, keep working hard in that final third. I know it's cliche to say it's the hardest part of the game, but it really is. Um, so, yeah, credit to Claire. Um, I think her start to the season has been brilliant. Becky, um, two questions for you. But just going into the second half with that one-on-one standstill, like, what was your just messaging to the team in, in that moment at least? Yeah, we obviously thought at halftime they would change a little bit. Um, I know that we prepared for what would they do if we came out in a 3-4-3, would they change the press, would they change how they built and they changed a little bit. Um, we knew that we had to continue to play and keep the ball. I think where Kansas really hurt teams are actually when you're in possession and something we said today was that we may have to concede a little bit of possession because they want us to have the ball um, and they want us to give the ball away so they can counter on us. So I think we didn't need to press as high. We basically said to them, well, you have the ball. <laughs> um, and actually, when I, I just looked, it ended up pretty 50-50 in possession. Um, so, yeah, we again, that's something that we have to look at. We have to continue to play when we go 1-0 up. We have to continue to play when we go 2-0 up. We can't just sit back and defend. Um, and again, I, I don't think we necessarily did that. Um, we just became a little careless on the ball. Um, and mistakes that we talked about that we that we needed to erase started to come out a little bit as we got tired. And then also too, just thinking about Madison Curry's performance, and obviously she did very well in today's game. Just what was your advice or the direction that you gave her for this match? Um, <laughs> I think I said it a million times in the last three days. It's just the shape behind the ball. When we have the ball, we have to make sure our shape behind the ball is really good. Um, I think she really embraces that like physical contact. Um, she's not afraid to tackle. She'll go in uh, in a one v one, leave her feet if she needs to. And I think she has that like really great. Who would have known she went to Princeton, huh? <laughs> um, she has that like really gritty side of her that um, is serving her really well. I think she's five games into a professional career, and she came out of the draft at fifty something. It's incredible, and she has such a bright future ahead of her. She's devastated right now, and I think. She put in a performance that she should be proud of and you can't ride the emotions of the NWSL because we've got a train tomorrow and we've got to get back on a plane to, to head out to the next game, which is also the best part. We can turn around and we can fix it in a, in a short space of time. But yeah, I think, again, she's five games in. She just has such a bright future ahead of her. Hey, Becky. Um, hey. Oh, in the in the three four three setup was Alyssa quite a little deeper than mm -hmm. she normally does? Yeah, it's a, a new role for Alyssa. Um, and it's a lot of work. <laughs> but yeah, at times she had to defend as a left back. And I think that, again, she embraced it. I think she did really, really well in it. Um, I think it obviously requires a lot of up and down running, box to box. Um, and she's more familiar with being a little bit closer to goal. But I think she showed a little bit more of a maturity tonight and how much she's growing. She's still 19, but she's taken on a different role. Um, she understood it. Um, I think the first question she asked me yesterday was, I'm going to have to take throw-ins, <laughs> um, which was very interesting. Um, but yeah, no, I think that, again, these are the things that it's the first time we've really played in that shape, um, using her as a wing back. But yeah, I think she did really well in it.
yeah, kind of adding to you know the whole holistic discussion. You you mentioned the assist earlier. How important is you know, getting that number? You know, just for her confidence. Uh, obviously, it's still very young, but just moving forward. Yeah, I think this year is a great year for Alyssa to just be herself and enjoy the game again um, and enjoy football. I think last year was a whirlwind year for her as a rookie. Um, I just want to take all that pressure off her and just give her that like love of the game. Um, and I think you can see that she's definitely. Um, She's played a lot of minutes in the last six games, and I think that and again is like another piece of maturity to her game. Is the way she plays, she often can't get to ninety minutes because it's so explosive, and she's just growing in that space as well, um, growing into herself as a young adult. And um, I think there is nothing better than her being herself when she's happy and she's enjoying her football. And I think you can see that she's starting to like really embrace who she is as a player um, and kind of take that like pressure off herself and, and just play. All right, you guys, if you guys want to check us out, check us out at InfanityTV.com. We'll see you soon. Yeah, it seemed pretty intense. Obviously, Angel City, I mean, you're down a bit, so it's tough at that moment. You really just have to focus on your defending and just trying to finish strong. And Becky mentioned how she played Alyssa a little bit deeper. And so you can see some of these players, I think, fitting into their roles a little more, like, with Claire, I mean, you have players like defensive opportunities as well, where she was able to hold that line into place. But when you have players like defensive opportunities as well, where she was able to hold that line into place. But when you have players like Dabinia and Temwa who are just on it, that can be hard too. Well, imagine having the audacity <laughs> to be able to bring Dabinia off the bench, right. and obviously, you know, getting away from Angel City. I think uh, she's beautiful player like just so technical so it's great to see her back as she's beautiful player like just so technical so it's great to see her back and like Michelle Cooper off the bench as well yeah like, she was a beast so yeah I would say I don't want to say depth wise there's a big difference I'd say offensive depth wise right there is a difference mm -hmm. right we're not on fire I thought Claire Hutton mm -hmm. a little bit biased because I trained her <laughs> But Claire, Claire's 18 years old. Yeah. She's playing like she's 30, mm -hmm. right? Like legit, legit player. So I think there's just a small percentage of mm -hmm. difference between the two teams. Next up, we've got Utah. Right, um, on the road. I would stick to a 3-4-3, three, three, mm. but I'm, you know, I'm not the coach. <laughs> I thought that first half 3-4-3 three, three was great. Second half 343 was probably 80% of it in the last six minutes. We switched off, and the fact is, in this league, as Becky said in the press conference, you cannot switch off. Right. We switched off twice and we got punished. Mm -hmm. yeah. Big learning moment for the team. What do you think is going to happen next as they go to, to Utah? Um, I think Utah beatable. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if we've got. We should be pissed. Right, right. right. We Ending just, the we night like this. We should yeah. have tied the, the, the top team. So I think we're going to go there pissed, and I think we're going to get a result. Yeah, for sure. I think, too, as well, like, there's a lot of good opportunities of what Becky was saying and some of the players as well of learning from this and taking it because they played so well and solid in the first half, but then struggling a bit in the second half to maintain all of that. So coming out on the road, I mean, that's a great opportunity to really make a comeback and get another three points. So... Who knows? I mean, they got their last win on the road as well before the the cur uh, before the courage win. So I think it's possible, and like you said, they're beatable. So we'll see what happens. So don't forget to tune in May 14th or 12th, 12th, right? May 12th like is the game against Utah. Check us out on Infanity TV. Jackie Gutierrez. Look Jackie up at Women Kick Balls on all socials. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah. Not only did you replace Lauren, I would, I would almost say you were better. Stop. No, this is unreal. Let's have a high five.